Hey monkeys, it's Jim from Small Time Outlaws and welcome to the seventh video in my advanced programming in monkey tutorial series. In this video we'll be covering how to use the public and private keywords within monkey to protect your code and to ensure that it's being utilized properly by other people that have access to your code. So let's go ahead and open up your monk and just like in the last video we're going to create two files because in Monkey with using the public and private in order to be really effective and especially when working with classes you need to keep these public and private declarations in separate modules so we're going to create a main file create that save it in let's see you can put it in any folder you want I'm just putting in the tutorials folder I made in the last video and I'm going to call this tutorial 7 and then I'm going to create a new file, save this one as, and put it in the test module. If you don't have a test module folder, you can go ahead and create one. Okay, save this as student. We're going to be creating a student class inside this module. And I'm going to kind of explain this as I create our class student, just like from the previous videos. Now, the reason you're going to want to use these public and private keywords in the first place is that like with interfaces there may be some cases where you don't want outsiders accessing parts of your code directly you want to direct them through a more public route to ensure uh, proper execution of your code so in this case what we're going to do is we're going to use the private keyword to set our fields of our student class to private so they can't be accessed from outside this module they can only be accessed through public methods. So I'm going to create a few fields. First one's the name, then the age. And, you know, I'm just going to do name. I'm just keep it short. I'm just going to end this, close this off, leave it just like that. So now, okay, by default, everything within the module is public to everything outside. So I don't have to put a public here to say this class is public. I can just leave it off. This class is by default public. And then within this class, I've created this private field name that can only can't that can't be accessed by code outside of this module. So to demonstrate that real fast, I'll go back to the main file and we're going to import the student module and it's in the test module directory. So we need to put the directory name dot student. And then we'll create our main function. And then we're going to create a student, call him student1, sign new student. And like I said, because it's public by default, I can access the student class, but I can't access the name field as I'll demonstrate right now. So we we'll set it to something like Billy, try to run it. I'm just going to say no, no, name is private. So, okay, I can get around that. I'm going to create a public, make a method called set name, and we're bringing a name. Oops. And now, because this name field is only private to code outside of this module, I can access it. So set self.name to the name coming in. Go back to our main file and change this to set name, Billy, and we'll run it and you'll see that it'll work just fine. Now I use this public keyword to start here with the method, but because that's how it logically should work, but for some reason in Monkey, the public and private doesn't seem to apply to methods. I don't know if that's a bug right now or if it's by design or what. So you, so you can see if I change this to private, it doesn't matter. I'll still be able to run set name. So I don't know what that's about. But I'm going to go ahead and leave it as public just in case it gets fixed by the time you're watching this video. And now, in case you're asking yourself, you know, as I once did, you know, why. Why in the world do we need to create a method just to change the value of a variable? Why don't we just, you know, change that value directly? 
And the reason, you know, one reason, of course, some people just like to have more control over the code and they want to be able to do other things when these values are being changed other than just, you know, changing a value. So, like in the case of many programs and games these days, you have like an inner or user interface and on this user interface you're displaying the, the player's name. So underneath it all, you know, there is the name, that name field, but when you change that name, you need to tell, you know, you need to tell the program to update the user interface to display that change. And so that's something you might do within the set name method. So that's just one case. And there are many other reasons why to do this, why you might want to do this. And it's so it's just become kind of a standard. So you might want to get used to doing it this way in case you want to move on to other languages or you want to enter this field professionally. So that's my advice on that. Now to show you what I mean when I say that these private fields are only private to code outside the module, i can show you that even though you specified this as private within this class, you can still access it anywhere inside this, this module file which is something as me coming from a C++ background this kind of confused me a lot at first and kind of bothers me but you know that's how the cookie crumbled so I'm just going to show you real fast you can create a student hit with the student create student function and at this point you shouldn't be able to access the name variable but you can so I'm just going to say hi Billy and I'm going to run this Actually, first I'm going to go call the create student function from here. And even though I'm calling it from outside, once it gets inside this create student function, it's inside this module. And so this name field is now accessible. And whoops, go back to the main file, build it, and you'll see that it ran without error. And now, just to show you that you can shut this down. You can, make, you can make functions private as well. Go here, try and build it. Say, can't find overload for create student because can't find it at all because it's private. Everything after this private keyword is private to all code outside of this file. And that's about all there is to keeping your publics private. As always, email me at jim at smalltimeoutlaws.com or leave some comments if you have any questions. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. And I'll see you in the next video where we're going to go over reflection. Get a reflection on.